Oliver, I'm sad that that introduction was so short. I was, I was loving it. I've never been called a planet before. We do know about Hurricane Alice, however. Uh, let me make a, a few points of welcome, and then uh, it's with enormous pleasure that I introduce a real force of nature, Lisa Murkowski. Um, the first is that tomorrow on this stage, uh, Vice President Mike Pence will appear at 1 o'clock um, to speak to the Wilson Center about the conference that occurred in uh, Miami last week on Central America. He was one of the leading players in that, in that conference, along with Secretary of State Tillerson and Secretary of Homeland uh, and the Secretary of Homeland Security. And at the Wilson Center, we have very strong programs in Latin America and Mexico. And I invited him to come to talk about the implications of the conference, and I'll be interviewing him. Why am I telling you this? Well, we're proud that he's coming here for a serious, substantive conversation. But I'm telling you this because I view today's event as equally important to tomorrow's event. And I feel that way because the Arctic and the issues around the Arctic, I have learned l late in my life, are probably the issues we can afford to be optimistic about. Oliver's right. Uh, we have the opportunity to get this right if we work together. And just before this morning, I was chatting with the Russian colleagues who've come here from Russia. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I think one of them asked me, or maybe I asked him, but anyway, the conversation was about optimism. And I said, if I weren't an optimist, I would not have stayed in politics as long as I did. And I'm sure that applies to Oliver, and I'm sure it applies to those of you who are members of the Duma in Russia. Politicians, I, most of us, want to add some value. And if you are not optimistic and you don't think value can be added, there are many other occupations that are easier, uh, that pay a lot more money, uh, and that are pleasant all the time. Uh, so uh, that's not why we go into politics. We are optimistic. And I just want to present a few thoughts as a recovering politician about why the Wilson Center is so eager to co-sponsor and take a leadership role in this town uh, about this. Uh, first of all, uh, I went to Reykjavik last fall for the Arctic Circle meeting and announced the fact that we were forming with a lot of help from our friends, like Alice and Oliver and Mead Treadwell, uh, a, an Arctic Circle initiative. It was, I'd been to Reykjavik once before, but not for a long time. It was my exposure to a fabulous country. If any of you have not been there, that's a mistake. And last week, I got to do something clearly on my bucket list, which was to take four of my six grandchildren to Iceland. Uh, it's gorgeous, especially in June when it's light uh, 24 hours a day. We arrived at 1.30 in the morning and it was light. Um, but just one aside, which was we had breakfast with Oliver, who happened to be in Iceland at the time. And the funny part of it was the six-year-old had to be dragged to breakfast in his pajamas. And my son, who's a lot older than six, forgot what day the breakfast was, so he had to be pulled out of the gym and came in his sweaty gym clothes. And there's Oliver, dressed impeccably, talking about his vision for the region. And I just, I gotta say, my friend, uh, you don't miss a beat. Um, we're all so lucky that you are such a leader. And I just would say a big thank you to Oliver Grimson. So. Why Wilson Center, why now? This polar initiative fits us perfectly because we are rated by our peers, there is actually a rating service for think tanks, as the top think tank in the world for transdisciplinary research. Lisa, listen up. Number one, right here. Uh, Arctic issues sit at the intersection of, of the social sciences, natural science, telecommunications, economic development, security, education, indigenous language and culture, and much more. And once we made the commitment to do this, we moved fast. Six months ago, six months into hosting this initiative, we hired, and everyone knows him, Mike Sfrega, uh, who represents perfectly the Brooklyn Fairbanks axis as the director. 
We organized, uh, he organized, the ministerial meeting of the Arctic Council in Fairbanks, where foreign ministers, as you heard, from eight countries met to discuss some of the most pressing issues. And we are hosting here the first ever Arctic Circle meeting in Washington. As a former politician, uh, these are my five reasons why this matters to do this here right now. Number one, most uh, members of Congress don't know a thing about this issue. Lisa has tried mightily, so has her co-chairman of the Arctic uh, Caucus, uh, uh, Angus King of Maine, to bring attention to the issues. But most members of Congress know nothing about it. Having this meeting in Washington matters. Having a chance to convey to Washington uh, a lot of the issues around this and the fact that we should be optimistic uh, matters. Second, as Oliver said, and I strongly agree, doing this, working on the Arctic and working on it here creates a bridge between the United States and Russia. We need a bridge between the United States and Russia. We need to show that we can work constructively together. Uh, we need to move forward on a relationship with Russia. And when you're in Reykjavik and you see that tiny little house where Reagan and Gorbachev had one of the most important meetings in history, you realize that if a tiny little house in downtown Reykjavik could bring together the United States and Russia, surely one of the major capitals of the world, this one, can bring together the United States and Russia. Third reason, there's a fourth as yet unpolluted ocean. Unpolluted. We haven't messed it up yet. And if we work together, we won't. Uh, fourth, there's a new major shipping lane that multiple nations may be able to share. And certainly, if the United States abdicates its role there, other nations will move in. We should know that. And fifth, there are major security issues that have to be resolved. There are borders where people threatening all of our countries can enter, and they're unguarded borders. They're caused by this new expanding ocean. So if I were a member of Congress now, I would pay close attention. And our keynote speaker, who follows me in about 30 seconds, uh, pays close attention. Uh, she comes to the center so often we ought to give her a badge. Uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski gets the Arctic. In her third term in the Senate, she serves on the Appropriations, Energy, and Health Committees. And the Wilson Center budget, just in case you missed it, resides in her Appropriations Subcommittee. So aren't we lucky? Even though Lisa Murkowski represents Alaska, I think she should be an honorary Californian, my home, my home state, because she cares about so many of the issues that Californians also care about. These aren't just Alaska issues. They aren't even just Arctic issues. They're actually world issues. And the United States, the greater United States, has to pay attention. So let me just say, Lisa, uh, that your friendship, your competence, your passion, are very much noticed at the Wilson Center. Please welcome Senator Lisa Murkowski.